Hello guys, Winston here. If you've seen my 2014 New York Maker Faire video, you might recall a project I stumbled across called Laser Ink. It was a complete laser upgrade kit for the Shape Oko 2, including software that will let you raster and engrave images in grayscale. A couple weeks after Maker Faire, I was contacted by Nick Williams of the Laser Ink project, who offered me a chance to use Laser Ink for myself. No demos or guided tours, I would be able to put my hands on the product and push whatever virtual buttons I wanted, so naturally I said yes. Before I dive into my experience using Laser Ink, I want to make it clear that what I'm using is a pre-production prototype. The hardware and software are both still being refined. What you see today may change as the project matures. With that being said, let's start from the top. What is Laser Ink? Laser Ink consists of two parts, hardware and software. On the hardware side, Laser Ink is a 2 watt 450 nanometer visible spectrum laser head for the Shape Oko 2. It's driven over a single Cat5 Ethernet cable, which brings in power from a 12 volt supply. This cable also carries a spindle speed control signal from the G Shield, which is translated into laser power at the head. None of this is really groundbreaking though. Laser upgrade kits already exist, and if you're feeling ambitious, you can even source all of the parts individually to save some money. What makes Laser Ink interesting is the software package called Object Works. With this software, you have a one-stop shop where you can import images, create G-code, and stream G-code. You can create programs for raster engraving images or line following with SVG files. From within the same program, you can access basic CNC controls like manual jogging. You can also use the software to stream G-code generated elsewhere, as you might do for CNC milling. Just to temper any unrealistic expectations before I go any further, a 2-watt laser will burn wood and cut through thin opaque materials like cardstock. The lasers you use to cut plywood and plexiglass are an order of magnitude more powerful and an order of magnitude more expensive. Laser ink is definitely not a toy, however. Any laser that has a power output measured in watts, even fractions of a watt, can cause permanent damage to your retina before your brain can even process the reflex to blink due to seeing a bright light. For reference, a standard regulated laser pointer, i.e. not purchased from China, cannot exceed 5 milliwatts. You should always wear eye protection when using high power lasers. Object Works requires the latest gerbil release, version 0.9. If you're not already running 0.9, the process for updating gerbil is super simple. On Windows, you can use the Xloader tool, and on Mac, you can use Hexloader. Basically, you point the software to the address and model of your Arduino, select the pre-built gerbil hex file you want to upload, and click a button to start. You're going to have to reconfigure Gerbil once this process is over, and that's where you'll likely have to consult some documentation and or refer to your original settings, which you should have saved somewhere as a text file or a screenshot. By the way, I looked it up, Gerbil is a totally kosher pronunciation and a far more interesting name for software than Garble. Unless you're a My Little Pony fan, there's no reason to pronounce your software in a name that connotes distortion, confusion, and corruption. The other bit of work you have to do to get laser ink up and running is to connect the spindle speed pin on the G-Shield to the laser head via a terminal block and ethernet breakout board. Spindle speed is sent over pin 11 on your Arduino, but to access it you will need to go through the G-Shield. The best way to do this is to install some headers on your G-Shield so that you don't have to permanently solder wires to it. The laser ink head bolts directly to the stock spindle mounting brackets on the Shape Oko 2. The tolerancing with this prototype didn't allow me to engage all four holes, but it should be fixed on the final shipping model. In reality, you probably only need to use two screws since almost no stresses will be applied to the laser head. Once you plug in the power supply and laser, you should be good to go. Because Object Works is currently in a fairly fluid state, this video is not intended to be a review or a tutorial. Instead, I'd like to focus on answering the question, does the lasering project accomplish what it says it does? The short answer is yes. I took a picture, imported it into the software, and punched out a burned image of variable intensity on my first try. The long answer is still yes, but there's a certain learning curve associated with laser etching, and I don't just mean with the software. Still, let's talk software first. With Object Works, you begin the raster engraving process by opening an image. You then have options to do some scaling, level adjustment, and thresholding. You can generate a preview of the grayscale image to be engraved, and I highly recommend you only do this on a computer that has more than one gigabyte of RAM. My netbook was having a real struggle fest with this part. Once you've got your settings plugged in, the software will generate the G-code and handle sending it to the Shape Oko. When you learn the GUI and naming conventions of Object Works, it becomes a fairly fast and simple process. Likewise, creating G-code from vector files is also very straightforward. Import an SVG, assign each colored line in the file an operation, and hit run. Laser engraving, however, is a tricky art. You have to balance laser intensity with feed rate in a way that ensures you mark the target material without completely charring it. 
it takes a bit of trial and error to dial in the right settings. You also need to consider ventilation when using a laser. Engraving an image produces smoke. Not a lot, but over long jobs, the smell will definitely fill a room, if not your entire house. I would almost recommend using the scent of a wood as a selection criterion when picking a material to engrave. Vacuums with good filtration and or enclosing your shape oko can help contain some of the odors associated with laser cutting. Or you could take it to the next level and exhaust the air directly outside. If you're etching or engraving plastics, check the MSDS to ensure that it doesn't produce toxic vapors when burned. Anyone who's a programmer will know that software development can be very challenging. Complications can arise with things like untested computer configurations, and schedules can slip. That being said, Nick from Laser Inc. has been tremendously responsive to my email inquiries, so I believe he and everyone else involved are truly committed to producing and supporting a quality product. And since the important part of Laser Inc. is its software, you can probably expect the user experience to improve even after launch. I don't want to advise anyone on how they should spend their money because everyone's needs and desires are different. Some people may want to buy a laser kit with a lot of development work done for them. Some people might enjoy the technical challenge of designing and sourcing their own laser components. Some people might not be interested in lasers at all. But if you are interested in laser etching, I would definitely keep an eye on this project. At the very least, it'll be a good source of inspiration since the hardware designs will eventually be open sourced. I'll try to put together a few more projects with Laser Inc. in the future so you can all see what's possible with a 2 watt laser as well as the Objectworks software. If you've already played around with laser engraving though, please feel free to share any tips or ideas with me in the comments section down below. And that about wraps it up for this video. I hope I've given you an adequate introduction to the world of lasers and the Laser Inc. project. If you have any questions specifically about Laser Inc., you can use the contact form at objectworks.co.com or send an email directly to nick at objectworks.co. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a couple weeks with something out of this world.